the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Welcome to church. God bless you for being here tonight. Just a little housekeeping and we'll get to the word. Um, I want to start tonight by saying a very, very big um, thank you. And I'll tell you why. Um, it's one thing to have people believe in you and believe in what you do and take you and whatever you do very seriously and as a leader when you find such people you must be very vocal about communicating gratitude hallelujah um, we've been on with our you know search for a very good property so that we can begin our own project as you know and um, i decided to just make the announcement uh, last week sunday and um, i have been in simple terms humbled and even broken by the participation the response not just from abuja here literally across the nation and people have sent in you know proposed lands to see i was very humbled when at least two people in all fairness i'm sure they are even here who were willing to literally um stop their project over acres of land to carry it you know to give it to hand it over to the ministry i had to reject it and tell them no no we are people of conscience in as much as we love the lord um i think it would be unfair for someone to be on his project and because of his love for the work just cancel a project worth billions and billions of naira but that's to tell you how far people have gone we've been overwhelmed by calls emails everyone saying look we want to um, check out this land check out this place you know let me talk to these fct minister fcda and this is just to say thank you thank you so so much the lord bless you in the name of jesus second is to thank and bring a word to those who have been calling because there are people who think we have started the building project already and people have been calling all over the world wanting to be part of it we have not started giving people an opportunity to sow into the building project we are people of integrity when we are going to start i will do the announcement myself why am i saying this so that scammers again will not take advantage of the sincerity of the people especially for our global family you can sow any seed you want to sow, but we have not started sowing particularly for our, our building projects and all of that. Soon we will start and we will announce the account we'll be using and then officially we'll pray and give people an opportunity to sow. So if you want to sow any seed as normal, you can go ahead and do that you know, with our account. But if it is particularly for the building project please be patient until we make that announcement and pray it's not so much about the money it's about participating in the work of the lord so the prayer and the declaration is more important than even the giving are we together please if anyone i'm saying this now especially for international community if anyone calls you in the name of apostle joshua selman or any staff or anyone in this ministry asking you to transfer money to them and they can take it to the account or telling you they are part of the finance department i'm saying it now please know you are dealing with fraudsters know that you are dealing with scammers are we together we will never do that to call you 
to say sending money maybe for prayer or whatever it is it is a lie hallelujah and then if for any reason i have to say this if the lord of course you will always find this there are people who have you know been led by the lord to be to maybe give properties that they have pending on the blessing of the lord if for any reason you or anyone you know is interested in those kinds of things please do meet the protocol and let me meet with them directly we don't do these kinds of things by proxy so anybody who tells you please just give me the land documents i know how to get it across to apostle is still a thief even if they are in koinonia praise the name of the lord so i'm saying it straight to the point so that there is no confusion about it we have to we cannot allow the devil to use men to take advantage of the sincerity of people are we together praise the name of the lord so everyone this is god bless you it is our corporate responsibility it's not only for joshua selman you know this now so that if someone is calling you or calling any of your loved one and saying um, send money or send all of these things for building project or some orphanage somewhere this is even the one that is popular they will tell you there is an orphanage home somewhere it is not true it is not true i repeat it is not true they are scammers prayer for counseling and they tell you to send money to some secretary somewhere and then they will pass the phone to me that person praying for you as me is not a sincere person hallelujah praise the name of the lord so i think it's good that we just um put that in place and then finally this announcement is for those at the overflow the overflow outside um outside includes anywhere that is not within the auditorium inside here outside and you know by the road as you know we've exhausted this facility we've done the best we can to manage people but every time god brings increase we thank him but with increase would you would need wisdom to manage the people so number one those outside we have put in place and we keep putting in place adequate security to make sure that lives and properties are protected um, but then we have also um, perfected a strategy um, to be able to manage those outside when rain comes there is still there are still two extra auditoriums here that we did not occupy we did not put people there so that whenever it is rainy or about to rain in 10 minutes following the direction of the protocol and the security and the ushers we can convey anyone no matter who to make sure that they are well seated within these auditoriums and they don't become victims of the rain so those outside i want you to know that we're a responsible ministry and in as much as you sit outside provisions have been made so that if and when rain comes and meets you there you can be sure that you will not be drenched outside you will be very irresponsible of us as a ministry to allow you so no matter what size whether it's a miracle service whatever it is i can tell you safely that within 10 minutes theoretically speaking and in all fairness it should not be more than 15 or so minutes we should be able to safely convey everyone around all you need to do is just obey the directive of the protocol the security and the ushering department are we celebrating jesus again <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord um we are to start a new series tonight but i've shifted it for next week so that it will give me room to teach and to discuss the things that i want to share tonight um tonight's message will bring healing will bring hope will bring true freedom and would bring deliverance this is one of the messages that whether you are a christian you are a muslim you are a free thinker you are serious with god you are a backslider it doesn't matter what category tonight's message will be most applicable to your life so i want you to pay attention and let's trust god to grant us wisdom in the name of jesus father give me an encounter by your word in the name of jesus please lift up your voice and pray give me an encounter by your word the lord appeared 
in Shiloh even by his word are you praying one minute Lord grant me access to your word in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah we'll look at three scriptures and then I'll begin my teaching Ecclesiastes chapter 12 Ecclesiastes chapter 12 we are reading the whole chapter remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say i have no pleasure in them next verse while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened nor the clouds return after the rain in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those that look out of the window be darkened verse 4 and the doors shall be shut in the streets and the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low five and when they shall be afraid of that which is high and fears shall be in the way and the almond tree shall flourish and the grasshopper shall be a burden and desire shall fail because man goeth to his long home and the mourners go about the street verse 6 or ever the silver cord be loosed or the golden bowl be broken or the pitcher be broken at the fountain or the wheel broken at the cistern seven it says then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto god who gave it vanity upon vanities saith the preacher all is vanity verse nine and moreover because the preacher was wise he still taught the people knowledge yea he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs the preacher sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written that which was written was upright even words of truth verse 11 the words of the wise are as gods and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies which are given from one shepherd and further by this my son be admonished pay attention now of making many books there is no end and much study is a weariness of the flesh 13 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man last verse for god shall bring every walk into judgment which with every secret thing whether it be good or it be evil the lord help us in the name of jesus next verse proverbs chapter 30 will read from verse 14 15 and 16 proverbs chapter 30 we'll read 14 15 and 16 are you still here there is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men the horse leech had two daughters crying give give there are three things that are never satisfied yea four things say not it is enough what are they number one the grave never says enough number two the barren womb never says enough number three the earth that is not filled with water 
never says enough and number four the fire that saith not it is enough father help us and give us understanding in the name of jesus christ the assignment of a man of god is to bring god's people into different dimensions of spiritual intelligence in a house like this um, we are mandated to ensure that believers are taught the various facets of kingdom living the first being the knowledge of god and the knowledge of the things that pertain unto god the next being understanding the mysteries of the kingdom the principles of the kingdom that make for an excelling life the principles that make for empowerment the principles that make for results because there is an expression of effective living that comes as the power of personal results but then in the midst of all these dimensions and all these pursuits it is also important to every once in a while bring in superior wisdom that helps people to manage their lives effectively and that would help people to live lives of meaning lives of purpose lives that at the end of it they would not regret and wonder what have i lived my life for hallelujah the subject of purpose is one that um, the body of christ is not in confusion or in ignorance over pulpit after pulpit book after book different people have taught on the subject of purpose and destiny i remember many years ago listening to a very powerful message by dr miles Munro. he preached that message in south africa and he spoke about five questions that every man must ask himself i may not remember the whole of the questions what i remember question number one is who am i i remember him saying every man born of a woman must within his lifetime be able to answer that question who am i i only remember the first and the last question i may not remember the other three there are five in all the last question is where am i going to who am i and then where am i headed for when i wake up in the morning what is the objective behind my pursuit my drive and all of these things in school of ministry there is one of our courses called personal transformation and i teach there about the graph of life helping men to understand to the brevity of life and how to live effectively and i've done a few teachings along that line um i think if i were not a preacher and if i were not a christian i probably would have been a philosopher i love to think intuitively to think and, and look at life um from a logical standpoint and from a standpoint of value what is life about why do we wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night I have the privilege of traveling a lot because of my schedules and my ministrations and there are cities i travel to in this nation and even around the world i am surprised that people don't sleep at any time you go to that city someone is moving and driving and laughing and selling and smiling in fact there are regions where the moment it is night that's why that's when other people wake up there's music playing people are enjoying themselves restaurants are warming or cooking food are fresh not even warming one that they had you no know, all kinds of things there are regions you go and you hear someone shout in the middle of the night calling passengers and they are coming <laughs> hallelujah so i i have seen a bit of the the interesting thing in life i have seen people wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night i've seen people aspire for so many things by reason of what i do i'm always praying for people who tr are trusting god for you know new heights new levels new dimensions in life whether it is financially whether it is in government and politics academics and all of that and i am amazed at how our needs do not seem to end so you meet a young boys in say secondary school 
and the need of that person and his desire his craving his prayer and even his frustration comes from the desire to probably finish secondary school write his exams pass jam and you see the gentleman depressed and you tell him what is the source of this depression and he says this jam i want to pass it now you ask one who is already in the higher institution of learning and his desire is to pass his exams defend his project and graduate and then the one who graduates will tell you i want to go further i'm trying to secure a scholarship to go for masters or phd and all of that and you ask a young man he will tell you my desire now is to marry her desire now is to marry you ask the one who is married they tell you the devil is a liar i must have children <laughs> are we together then the one who has children their desires change and they tell you thank god for girls but i think we need to add boys to this list and the, dep the same depression the person had when he was small has been changing or remaining the same using different different needs and then you ask the one who um is staying with his parents and his desire and frustration is i'm no longer a child i need to get out of this house then he gets out and smuggles himself to a small room and after a while his desire is to have a bigger house then he gets tired of being a tenant and he will tell you my new desire the source of this my frustration and wrinkling my face is that i want to start building you ask the one who now has children and their desire is to have these children grow and become responsible 10 11 years later same frustration but now the basis for that frustration is i didn't realize having so many children would require so much money for fees that becomes another journey later you ask them and they say i can't imagine that i suffered and went through this only to give birth to a foolish child this child is 18 years old and i almost regret giving birth to this child and remember the same person look at all the various transitions same frustration then you ask the one who gets a job and is happy gives testimony six months later he's saying i don't understand this what kind of failure is this um i i didn't offend anybody this is an office i rejoice it came by prophecy i need promotion same frustration hmm. pay attention and then you find one who has gotten the job and the promotion now the promotion causes trouble between the couple because now their salaries are similar and it looks like the man is saying so now that god has lifted you another frustration that has come as a result of that lifting and then the frustration would soon change when they go to the hospital and they say it looks like there is a lump or a growth in your body how old are you i'm 55 was suspecting prostrate all of a sudden the prostration that was there when he was young now returns but a different reason is the sponsor so i'm going to die you would think that with all of the achievements the frustrations should diminish you would go to the house of a very wealthy man and turn left and right and see everything you desire and aspire for and yet that man is still looking for something and you're asking what are you still looking for and the man will say something like i can give up all these things you see for what i am looking for and he's still frustrated remember when he made his first million remember when he made his first billion he thought it would give him that peace and satisfaction and even in the midst of plenty remember the first time the man boarded a flight coming from a background of penury and poverty he was happy and smiling now he may probably have his own private charter or his private jet and in the midst of it there is still that frustration how about those who hang and write letters with billions piled in their accounts and shoot themselves or hang themselves as painful as death is that a state can come in a man's life where it seems better to die than to live are we still together how about a young preacher on campus catching the fire praying for eight hours 
praying for nine hours learning about greek and hebrew as a new experience and my goodness this gentleman is now beginning to step into some kind of dimension of grace now they invite him for small fellowships and the power of god is moving this young man is rediscovering a whole new world about his destiny happy and excited for a while then campus days are over then he desires to start ministry another frustration comes where do i get venue where do i get money and then he starts ministry 30 years later he's angry frustrated looks back and he does not even know whether he was called or not <laughs> what are we really looking for please i want you to listen to this message the lord put it in my heart to share for the terrorists or one who would stand and kill people and rob a bank and rob people what are they really looking for for the preacher who has a large congregation and yet continues to pray and say god give me increase what are we really looking for for the one who has successful children all graduates all successful all working and they still have prayer requests what are they looking for the one who just made his first billion in dollars and is still looking for something still submitting proposals from state to state nation to nation region to region fighting and arguing over wars fighting and arguing over um contracts what is he looking for for the man of god who has been in the faith working with god for 40 years and he's still fasting and praying what is he looking for for one who has seen the power of god move in his life in uncommon unimaginable dimensions what is he looking for you will thank me for the message that you are hearing tonight this message will give your life meaning it will give your life perspective and indeed it will give you peace are we learning the bible says there are four that never say enough it is not within their there is nothing they never attain any state where they can say i have had enough i've had the honor and the privilege of studying very successful people and successful systems i didn't want to be a failure myself i hate failure hallelujah and i knew that for you to succeed in life you would need knowledge and indeed a lot of it and so i submitted myself to learning i still do and i'm humbled by the things that i've learned through the years from books from men from materials and even from my own experiences i used to think that the greatest tragedy in life was failure that the worst that can happen to a man in life is that that man fails fails to achieve his or her dreams but i would soon discover that there is another tragedy that is greater than failure and it's not death this discussion is not about those who are dead this discussion is about those who are alive what is worse than failure i will tell you there is one thing that is worse than failure it's called success without fulfillment that success without fulfillment would bring a greater sting a greater frustration than even failure it is possible for a man to be successful and never be fulfilled in my studies and my learning about god and learning about systems learning about principles of posterity principles of um, stability in the lives of people and in organizations i have found out that the subject of fulfillment is one that many people have downplayed to their detriment there are many 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 people today who are victims of the absence of fulfillment even though successful the greater tragedy greater than failure 
is a life of success that does not have fulfillment in genesis chapter 37 when you read from verse 15 the bible talks about joseph i just want to borrow a concept there and then i'll begin my teaching that joseph was sent to go and look for his brothers and the bible says and a certain man found him the him being joseph now and behold the bible says he was wandering in the field wandering in the field and the man asked him saying what seekest thou he saw him wandering who is this young man very visionary but you are wandering in frustration it seems to me your body language and your action suggests to me that you are looking for something i see your determination i see your press it seems you're going back and forth you're waking up in the morning i see you're going to have a master's you're going to have a phd i see you're attending conferences and trainings they suggest to me that whilst you are wandering around there is something you are looking for the question is what seekest thou what are you looking for that has made you travel to us for trainings travel to canada for trainings that even in old age you are not ashamed to go back to school again what seekest thou what is that that you are looking for that makes you to hate and detest failure so much books upon books you have a library that is full of them and anything that looks like useful information you are like a sponge absorbing anything that seems to propose a greater life please keep that scripture there 37 15 a certain man found him and behold he was wandering in the field and the man asked him a simple question what seekest thou as simple as this question is ladies and gentlemen you can spend your entire life trying to search for the answer you would think you have found the answer and 10 years added to your life you would discover what you found was not really the answer many people have gone to their graves unable to answer this question what are you looking for what is that which motivates you why are you doing the things that you are doing there are people who retire respectfully speaking from service and they cry and beg and say retain me again even though the company and the organization is saying you've tried you've served for 30 35 years go and rest they say no i don't want to rest what seekers thou when a patient runs around looking for a doctor traveling from nation to nation what seekest thou? Write this down, please. Understanding the subject of fulfillment, understanding the subject of fulfillment is one of the pillars for living an effective life on earth understanding the subject of fulfillment is one of the pillars for living an effective life on earth hallelujah i took out time to learn the subject of fulfillment because i do not want to live a useless life in as much as you love me in as much as you believe that i'm a man of god sent from god in as much as you have been blessed by the privilege of the investment of grace upon my life do you know it is possible to live a life impacting people whilst you are frustrated do you agree with me on that there have been many people on earth in the secular and even in church who kill themselves in the presence of overwhelming impact traveling from pillar to post blessing people while everybody is calling you a blessing you are dying in total frustration in fact i will tell you this psychologists will tell you that some of the people who are perceived to be the most successful people are about the most frustrated people they live lonely lives they are on drugs they have to live off 
therapy after therapy and you are surprised you go to their offices and you see awards day and night and yet those people can wake up one morning and literally die of frustration it means there is something that if we do not understand we stand a risk of living a life that is extremely successful but and in the midst of our success we find out that we live defeated lives that do not count as far as fulfillment is concerned for someone shout no way in the name of Jesus Christ I've met very old people I like to see elderly people especially those who have done something notable I believe they have profound wisdom and I can learn from them and I will tell you the truth a number of them even in old age in the course of our discussion have been very open to tell me apostle I did this I that I did that I traveled here I traveled there some of them preachers some of them business people and they would tell me that there was still a longing in their hearts that they felt like they did not do enough what is fulfillment please write this down I define fulfillment as the satisfaction please write it I define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively the fulfillment the satisfaction and the joy you may want to add the satisfaction and the joy that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity fulfillment is the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity is called fulfillment now i want you to tighten your seat belt and sit quietly as i teach you something that i truly believe will revolutionize your life i have taught a bit on it here um but then i want to teach this in detail it was a miracle and it was a deliverance to my own life from living a life that was futile filled with only success without fulfillment i want to live a life that is both successful and a life that is fulfilled by every standard are you ready now there are six fundamental human needs write it down please there are six fundamental human cravings there are more than needs they are desperate cravings that every man provided you are alive it is the craving that defines the motivation that drives everything that you do in your life whether from a spiritual context whether from an economic context whether from a sociological context all of us as the human species are driven essentially by these six needs but believe me they are more than needs they are cravings that literally your sense of fulfillment from a human standpoint depends on your having these cravings satisfied that if at any point in your life these cravings are not met and represented in your life it will only spell utter frustration no matter what line of work or career whether you are a preacher an apostle a prophet a businessman an academician a family man young old male female educated uneducated black white it does not matter this is a reality that is common to us all six fundamental human cravings human needs are you ready please write them down number one the need for security please write it down every human born of a woman has this craving from within them the need to feel secured physically secured 
emotionally secured now this needs vary based on gender based on age based on levels of exposure but ultimately all of us have the same need it is just the various degrees of these needs that now define what we call our personality security men will give up anything to feel secured even if they are not secured sadly and unfortunately we've had several things happen across kaduna for those of you who are in nigeria here the mayhem that was unleashed on people it's unfortunate it's been quite a tragic two week especially for that region and you can imagine so everyone within that region would crave for security and the moment you see a military man wearing a uniform you are happy to see that person is that true because that person represents security number two the second human craving is the need for variety or dynamism please write it down variety or dynamism this is the reason why anything that is new especially in the mass media cells because we like to know what is the breaking news what is the new information people hate boredom it's not it's not given to the human species to endure boredom indefinitely people like things that create variety that's why people find special moments and celebrate them that's why you do not wear the same color of cloth every day for instance that is the reason why you you are tired of a house that you've been living in and you will want to move to another house it's a craving for variety companies based on this awareness reinvent their products reinvent the packaging of their products and just by reinventing the packaging of their products can rise to millions of dollars and billions of dollars simply because they satisfy this craving for variety same product they don't have to change anything as far as the product is concerned but they gave it a presentation that was new and appealing are we together number three the third craving that is in every human being is the need for significance write it down please this is a very serious one especially to men significance hmm. the concept of respect as we know the concept of honor we know that is embedded in most of the masculine gender if not all came from the need for significance when you bow down and you greet me and say good afternoon sir why am i excited as you're bowing down when you kneel down and say good afternoon ma it is it gives people a perception of significance are we together now people crave for significance they crave for it more than you can ever know preachers parents young people business people men women everyone significance people crave for respect people crave for honor and people crave for acknowledgement you know what acknowledgement is to make sure you are aware of the extent of the worth of that individual and that you can attest to the fact that that individual is that valuable it's called acknowledgement people can go to any length to be acknowledged businessmen pastors politicians have become act enemies for decades simply because someone's pedigree was downplayed by not being acknowledged or not acknowledged properly are we together if i sit on any of these beautiful seats or i sit on the ground or i sit on any white chair anywhere what difference does it make in terms of um in terms of my physical person it may not necessarily make any difference but it seems to communicate a sense of significance a sense of acknowledgement a sense of respect a sense of honor and you can't believe how people crave for it In every occasion there is something called high table high table 
it's still table hi now what is the difference between those who sit there and those who sit everywhere else they can even eat the same thing in every flight there's what is called first class there's what is called business class and economy these are various names that were invented to help manage and communicate the idea of significance are we together you go to certain places and say this is a priority route this is a regular route all these names vvip uh, vip you know and all of these things they are all they are all various attempts please pay attention to what i'm teaching you significance you cannot imagine the degree to which you crave for significance it's a craving that many people it would take a lot of enlightenment to even be aware of the extent to which you need it number four are you ready for the fourth the fourth craving desperate craving of all humans is love and acceptance the need to be accepted please underline that word acceptance the opposite of acceptance is rejection and go and ask any psychologist and any man of god who is serious with god and they can tell you the 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 severe consequences of being in a position of rejection are we together love and acceptance please look up why do you think most people join occult groups i can tell you go and ask most of these young people while in secondary school now unfortunately i don't mean called like village called groups the one that you know these guys that move around and you ask them what, what they are looking for they will tell you i came from a family where nobody believed in me nobody accepted me and here is this group and they told me if they can scar my body and do all kinds of things i will be accepted and they will endure such pain provided it will provide acceptance hallelujah people crave for love and people crave for acceptance people have cried because doors were shut at them they were not accepted people have cried because they did not give them employment it was not about the employment or lack of it but that it was communicated in a way that shows that you are rejected and they go back feeling things that have no business with that job so is this how my life is going to be hallelujah praise the name of the lord yes there are sincere men and women who come seeking counseling from psychologists seeking counseling from men and women of god and they say look i think i'm a beautiful lady i think i'm a handsome man and look at my life nobody has ever said good morning nobody has ever said good afternoon what is making them feel that bad they sense a longing for acceptance and the pain of rejection is someone learning number five what is the fifth craving of all human beings growth and increase people crave to grow people crave desperately to grow every parent wants to see their child or their children grow every child wants to grow to become an adult um, parents many of you would see children a young child who started walking and doing all kinds of things and if the mother should leave her dressing space to that child one day the child is going to surprise her you will come and you see the child trying to put eyelashes trying to put all kinds of things the child is insisting and say i can't wait for 18 years it's too long or 15 years or whatever let me make my attempt now and the child will paint himself into all kinds of things the need and the instinct for growth how about teenagers you flog them and say be patient until you are 18 before you start driving the same car that will be tired and pack it one day but they will fight once they are 17 16 that you will have to flog them advise them make them quote scriptures to stay in one place and wait for just one more year before they start driving the need for growth the need for growth the need for growth 
especially in africa most people hate being called children when except it's a very old man who says you're a child but anybody who is maybe just a few years older than you if he calls you a child say look you are older than me but don't you dare call me a child i'm not a child because there is something about our passion for growth even children now say don't call me a child what are you i'm not an adult but i'm not a child anyway <laughs> everybody say growth dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline